Welcome back to your Carolina. We're, we're live from our Michelin on Main TV studios in downtown Greenville and uh, just get all cozy. I know it's rainy outside. We're going to answer some of those questions that you have probably had somewhere tucked back in your mind about plastic surgery and improving things. Uh, I, I would preface it with saying improving them for, for yourself not for anyone else. And Dr. McFadden, do you agree with me on that? I, I bet you do. It's always good to improve yourself. That's right. Uh, Dr. McFadden is a board certified plastic surgeon and um, we can find you in Greenville. That's, yes. that's where your office is. Yes, 29 Rocky Slope Road. If you have any questions, please come see us. We'll be happy to talk to you. Okay, let's, let's talk about when is the right time. Really, it's the right time whenever you, it's constantly on your mind. Uh, I would say if it's every day, every other day, um, then you generally should talk to us and, uh, and let us know. You know, if uh, something's on your mind, we can certainly help you with that. Okay. Now, this first picture that we are looking at, tell us what, what we're, we should uh, be looking for. Yeah, uh, people are generally concerned about scars and surgery, and, and this is just to show that an endoscopic breast augmentation with an incision underneath the arm really is a non-issue. I mean, you can really not find that scar there. Uh, I don't see a scar there. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a good right. thing, isn't it? So uh, is that the the preferred entrance for breast augmentation? It is for me. I, I believe that I'm the only one in South Carolina who does the procedure that way right now. But I used to say that, that was, that's the way that you should do it because of that scar only. But I think you get an anatomical uh, advantage uh, in control of the breast pocket, which leads to long, uh, less complications right. over the long term. Okay. That way. And uh, and the downtime for something like that? It's really only about uh, three or four days. Oh. Yeah. A lot of plastic okay. surgery procedures actually have less downtime than a lot of people think. Okay. And then facelifts, because Fa there's been many people who've looked in the mirror and and done uh, this number. Right. Right. Which <laughs> always means that I want surgery. That's the <laughs> Is I want that surgery. What that means? Yes. Yes. Okay. And so facelifts generally require a recovery time of about 10 to 14 days at, at most. Um, Is that because it's going to last longer? Well, you always look pretty bad in the first few days, uh, really, no matter what approach you take. And the face is a sensitive area. The face is a sensitive area. But we, we have better ways to improve and speed your recovery nowadays. Can I interrupt you? Sure. My goodness. Tell me, this is a before and after? It this doesn't is, even look like the same lady. Yeah, this is a before and after of a lady who had a facelift and upper and lower lids. And uh, you can see, again, there's really no perceptible scars. Uh, with the approaches that we take nowadays, that's really a non-issue. So she has had work under her eye and above her eye. Right. I see no scarring right. whatsoever. That's right. a wonderful job. That's always and the goal. that side view, of course, you know, the, we yeah, get she, that under the chin that hangs sometimes. Right, the turkey neck. And she doesn't really have a bad no. neck, but she does have increase in uh, jawline definition and the neckline, which is always the goal of surgery. All right. Okay, so from that, we're, we're going to go to nose right. surgery, and there's right. always the bad nose jobs we've seen in Hollywood. Yes, yes. <laughs> Where and, they took it too far. Well, sometimes they do, uh, but really the goal of nose surgery should be just to make sure that your nose is not a focal point of your face. It's not the center of attention. It's not the first thing you look towards. You really should just proportionalize it and really focus uh, uh, the oh, attention on pretty eyes, for example. I was about to say, I don't, my attention is not drawn to her nose, but, yeah. but th those beautiful eyes she does Right, have. so she has a little bit of increase in her tip definition, and uh, we, sh we uh, shorten the width of her nose a little bit, and that's about it, two very simple things, and just made her nose uh, blend in with her face a lot better. All right, uh, natural. Looking. Yes, very natural. Yeah, yeah, very, very much so. Okay, we're going to move from that uh, to our backsides and our thighs, right. and that's a that's a touchy subject with us ladies, because that's where everything seems to go, and now that right. we're on computers, sitting around all the time, right. it's going there even more. Right. Well, liposuction is one of the top procedures year in and year out. Um, the one thing I wanted to mention was that, you know, there's a big focus in the last couple of years about laser-assisted liposuction, and 10 years ago there was on ultrasonic liposuction. And really, these thermal-based technologies uh, don't really add very much benefit at all, but they do add a significant amount of risk. And here's uh, traditional tumescent liposuction, and this girl had it done to her saddlebags, uh, a little bit to the buttocks, a little to the lower abdomen, and she has a really excellent result. 
Now, of course, liposuction depends on the ability of the skin to contract. So this girl has excellent skin, okay. and so she's going to have a great result. Okay. Uh, and then I, I want to I try and, and fit the facelift, but resurfacing even after that. Right. When you say resurfacing, that's way more than like a microdermabrasion and stuff. Well, microdermabrasion is not very much. You know, right, exactly. I, it, it really just smooths the skin a little bit. It doesn't really get down very deep at all. So laser resurfacing really takes off the top layer of skin, gets down to the dermis, the superficial to middermis, and uh, rejuvenates the skin. It really starts all over again. You wipe the blackboard clean and you start all over. Here's a 70-year-old lady who has phenomenally better skin after a facelift, but also full face laser resurfacing. And so this is her only 20 days later. That is, that's and, amazing And it, it's the only thing that really improves the quality of the skin. Okay, we've shown you so many options, but if people want to find you, tell, tell us yeah. once again where you're located. Again, my office is at 29 Rocky Slope Road. And uh, if you have any questions about anything, just feel free to drop by and we'll be happy to talk to you. All right, Dr. McFadden, thank you so much. It's always encouraging to see those before and afters. Well, after you get that bundle of joy and, uh, and, and you get back into the reality of life, many mothers out there are looking for the chance to uh, have a little after pregnancy makeover. And that is exactly what we are gonna talk about with Dr. Thomas McFadden, this, uh, this particular segment brought to us by him. He is board certified in plastic surgery, but uh, you're, you're fellowship trained in cosmetic and breast surgery. Right. And boy, where to start? I've had two kids, so I can speak from experience that things just... Looks like you're doing okay, though. They don't... Well, <laughs> <laughs> you know, clothes help. But we as women want to be comfortable, you know, within our own skin, even in the mm -hmm. privacy of our own home or the right. privacy of, with our own husband. Right. So we'll, let's talk about some of these things. And there okay. are things that can be fixed and probably things that can. Right. Uh, the typical mommy makeover is, is usually considered to be a tummy tuck as well as a breast lift. Uh, the breast lift can come with breast implants or just by itself. Um, uh, typically, uh, you can get some potluck with breast lifts, uh, or actually with pregnancy. You know, typically, what we what I recommend is that you get just a breast lift alone because if you have stretchy skin and you're here to see me for a breast lift, adding weight to it is generally not a good idea, except mm. in those cases where you just have nothing there, and so you really need to get something. So that's when we recommend a modest size implant. Right. And uh, so let's let's start with the first uh, first one, which is the tummy tuck. I mean, your right. your stomach is definitely the thing that, and it is amazing how God makes it you know stretch back in. But still, there's oftentimes a lot more give right. than what we want. Usually, what I see is that the first one's free. That usually go back to your pre-pregnancy shape, you know, after the first one. But the second one really does a lot more damage. Right. And uh, here we see a lady. She actually came to me, and, and to be uh, politically correct, she said, I really want you to take this bottom off of my front and, oh. uh, and make me uh, whole again. So um, the best thing to do with stretch marks on the tummy is to remove as many as possible, and the next best thing is to stretch the remainder. And so you see we've done that here. And on the side view, you can see that she's really flattened out significantly right. as well. So tell me what you're doing uh well, we'll get to we'll, we'll get to the stretch marks here in just a little bit, but let's talk about moving from the stomach to the breast. Uh, whether you breastfed or not, the breasts are going to have gone through a transformation just like the stomach. Right, right. And like I said, you know, it's really potluck with the breasts. You know, you can go from very little to very big during pregnancy, and then back to very little again, or stay very big and then get bigger than ever, or you can be perfect the whole way through. And I've seen all of these combinations. So just depends on what happens right. as to what needs to be done. And, and you had mentioned before, you, it doesn't necessarily mean an, an augmentation or anything, but right. just, uh, you know, a lift. Right. Uh, you know, a lift by itself is just reshaping the breast. It's giving you that bra shape without the bra. That's great. All right. So uh, lipo. Is that, is that also an option uh, after pregnancy? Liposuction certainly can help. Uh, you know, when you go through these large hormonal fluctuations during pregnancy, you tend to gain some extra weight, and it puts it on in areas that you don't like, and so we can certainly help those areas out. We can do some lipo of the tummy as well as lipo of the lateral thighs, uh, usually the 
the medial thighs and the upper medial thighs, or sorry, the medial knees and the upper medial thighs. Places where even exercising, it's tough to, to get to those places. Yeah, liposuction is ideally suited for those pe people who have uh, diet and exercise resi resistant areas of fat. And right. so, it, in, in this girl here, it's really very effective because she's a very appropriate candidate. And it depends on the quality of your skin as to how much contra contractility uh, you get out of that skin. Can we talk more specifically about stretch marks? What What do you do for them? I mean, we see creams, you know, yeah, on a, on a drugstore shelf. <laughs> Lotions and potions, if you hear advertisements about these things, you can pretty be well assured that they're not going to work. Mm -hmm. uh, there is nothing scientific that's been proven to really help. A lot of times these things generally make the skin and tissues swell and then when you stop using them, then that swelling goes away and the wrinkles come back. Uh, like I said before, the, the best treatment uh, for stretch marks right now is to cut most of them out and stretch the remainder. Lasers can help uh, up to 90%. They're mm -hmm. a little bit less costly than cutting them out or surgery, uh, but they can help, uh, but you generally need repeated sessions. And, and I have to mention uh, this. I, I know when you think uh, after pregnancy, you don't necessarily think face, but we have, we have gained weight everywhere if yes. you are a normal pregnancy. So facelift is also often done. Facelift is sometimes done as well, uh, especially if you gain a lot of weight and then lose the weight. You have some uh, residual areas that need correction, uh, have some tissue laxity, but pigmentation also is a very common issue. Um, oh, yeah, there's even names for uh, pregnancy mask. Pregnancy mask, right. Yeah. yeah, dyschromia is the technical term for that. And so there's a variety of ways that we can take care of the pigmentation. We can use good skin health care. We like abaji, uh, which is kind of uh, an everyday thing, a lesser cost, but it does take some persistence. Number two, a chemical peel, and number three, laser resurfacing. Uh, and that lady had uh, actually all three of those at some and point. So. Wow, at the difference. Yeah, really, big difference. really good. Okay, I want people to know where you are because a consultation is really where you start, and and that way you can tell people. Sure. Each individual is different. Each individual is different. Needs a, a, an individual plan, and come see us at 29 Rocky Slope Road. Greenville. Uh, the holidays are coming up, so everyone likes to incorporate their holiday vacation with their recovery. So sign up, reserve your spot. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, encouraging to see all, all the advances that are out there. Sure. Thank you. We appreciate Thank it. Thank you. And welcome back to your Carolina. We have uh, Dr. Thomas McFadden in to talk about uh, in improving yourself, and that's okay. It's, can, it's, can, can we get past that? We've gotten sure. past that point, don't you think, yeah, in 2012? I think, you know, everyone's vain, so we all have to just admit that. Yeah, well, <laughs> I mean, we've also seen a lot of news stories where if, if you improve yourself, like it or not, you, you see uh, improvements in your job. And I don't know if that's because you yourself have more self-confidence or is it just the superficial, but it's certainly there. Well, I think people feel better about themselves, uh, and that leads to more confidence, which leads to better, you know, personal interactions. Uh, frequently, in, in sales, for example, people do better, and uh, it's not uncommon that they receive some promotions. But it is also just, uh, it should be for the individual themselves. Yeah, I mean, it's obviously for you to make you feel better about yourself. Uh, frequently, we have a, the spouse come in, and the spouse just doesn't care, which is great. That's the perfect scenario, and so. The, the patient just wants to feel better about him or herself. And we're going to talk uh, specifically about facelifts today. Right. Uh, when there, Hollywood has not done justice to facelifts, you and I were joking about some of the bad ones. Well, you only here. hear about the bad ones, but there's many, many good ones <laughs> that you don't hear about. And, and you don't hear about them because we don't necessarily notice them. We just go, wow, you well, look. You look really nice today. Right, that's true. I mean, always a very natural look is a great result. Mm -hmm. And so I always uh, aim to, to do a procedure on somebody where nobody really notices that they had a procedure done. They just look better, they feel more, or they look more refreshed, they look uh, more rested, that sort of thing. Because you don't want someone going, oh my goodness, did you get a facelift? Right. You really don't want the, someone saying no, that. So not there at are all. Uh, two different kinds, primarily the mini facelift and the full facelift. Right. Well, I mean, you can generally categorize them into minis and fulls. And the, the reason why I wanted to bring this up today is because a lot of people have the misconception that you can do a mini facelift and get a maxi result. And the truth mm. is you can't do a mini anything and get a maxi result. Who is the mini facelift good for other than the person who thinks I'm going to take a budget shortcut? 
Right. Uh, the mini facelift is appropriate for a person with many needs. And so if you have a little bit of improvement that you really want to see, then that's a good candidate. And so this is a, an example of a mini facelift technique. It's a, what's called an S-lift. And uh, it's basically two purse string sutures in the, the tissue layer beneath the skin to a, a solid anchor point. Uh, but it's limited undermining of the skin, limited dissection. So for, for those of us who, who've never seen, would the scar be where that dot is, like right in front of the ear? It's and right. is there a scar? Well, there's, whenever you make an incision, there's always a scar. Okay. And our job as plastic surgeons is to make sure that uh, the scar is at least perceptible, the, the least perceptible that it can be. Right. Okay. And uh, let, because I was thinking that would really be hidden by hair or anything, if in time it's even seen. Certainly can be. And this is another example of, uh, this is actually a classified as a fuller facelift. It's an extension of the mini. It's a little bit more dissection. Ah with a third purse string suture in a, in a different area to pull all that tissue up uh, towards the temporal hairline. Uh, a facelift is going to take care of which areas? The, the drooping jowls, uh, will it get any of the neck material or is that entirely different? Yeah, the, the neck is usually the worst part of the face in a person who needs a facelift. And so the neck is gonna be improved, the jawline is gonna be better defined, the cheek fat pad is gonna be elevated. Uh, this is another technique of a full facelift, a SMAS facelift, or I won't go through the long term, but basically it's the, the thin connective tissue layer underneath the skin and is lifted up as a flap and sutured back to itself. Oh, wow. This is the gold standard in plastic surgery, and this is what I was taught as the gold standard, and I've kind of abandoned this for an extended quick lift technique, and I know that's a hokey name, but I didn't make it up. But uh, I think uh, the extended quick lift is more durable, will last longer over time. What is the, the lifespan, uh, ideally, with, with a extended? For, uh, for a mini facelift, it's about two to five years. And for a full facelift, it should be five to 10. But I wow. anticipate that these extended quick lifts will last even longer, especially if you combine that with laser resurfacing. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that's, it, that's quite a, an amount of time. It yeah, really it's is. a long time. This is a, uh, the extended quick lift. Uh, now, we're just transitioning to a, uh, a mini facelift. This is a lady who has mini needs. She has mini jowls and she has a little bit of neck laxity. That's her four days later with a mini facelift. She drove herself to the appointment. She's a little bit bruised, but no worse for the wear. It, it, but it's remarkable after, I mean, again, you don't look at her and go, oh, you've got a facelift. Yeah. Yeah. She just looks younger. This is her actually four years later. And so, again, because she had many needs, she had a long-lasting result because she didn't need a whole lot of a correction. So yeah. that's her at 47, and, and on the right is her at 51. And again, you notice in the neck area and the jowl line, I, I think, the most. It's just much snugger, much yeah. tighter, yeah. But, it, but natural. It is very, very natural. Right. Uh, what, what age woman or man, because we are seeing men doing this, are, are you seeing with these facelifts? And then we'll move on to the second picture here. Yeah, the age range can vary uh, depending upon the patient's desires and their needs, always, from about 45 to 75. Okay. You know, I've All done right. a facelift on a 76-year-old lady. This is a correction of a lifestyle lift. You see on the left, she, this is after her lifestyle lift, uh, she really didn't get a whole lot of improvement in her neckline, uh, or and her that is cheek area. Advertised on television a lot. Yes, um, unfortunately, it's it's more of a franchise marketing concept okay. as opposed to a defined procedure. And there's a lot of variability that you'll get in terms of who does it. Mm. Uh, she had hers done in Atlanta. Uh, she's actually from northern Georgia. She came to see me, and she had this corrected for half of the price and under now local it's so anesthesia. So smooth, and yeah, 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 it's really a big difference. Quite a bit different. Okay. So we're seeing uh, lot, lots of befores and after. We, we should say where people can find you, Dr. McFadden. It is advanced. Uh, advanced cosmetic surgery. We're at 29 Rocky Slope Road. Uh, come by and see us. We'll be glad to talk to you about your needs mm -hmm. and your desires. And uh, we'll come to a good plan for you. And by the way, gentlemen do get work done. They sure do. This and guy this here. guy looks so, that's remarkable before and after. Yeah, he, uh, he actually had a very nice improvement. He had laser resurfacing as well. Now, laser resurfacing, um, it, can you tell us like, what you, who that's for? It's for people with a lot of wrinkles. People with a lot of wrinkles, okay. I mean, cosmetic. Not, is it coloration and wrinkles? Is it, or is it both? It, it helps coloration also. It's basically laser resurfacing is for people who need the drapery tightened up. 
over the framework. Okay, all right, so it tightens the skin. Right. There you go, so, it, all right. It, it's remarkable work. Thank you. Okay, we appreciate it so much, right. Dr. Thanks McFadden. Thanks very much. And uh, if, of course, if you have a, any questions, uh, you can get a hold of him. What is it? Tell us real quick. This, uh, this, lady. this lady had an extended quick lift. Uh, yeah. A lot of people who come in and I show that, they say, wow, she looks like her daughter. Oh. Yeah, very nice result. She's very pleased. It must be a good job to have That's people good. just, it, I mean, it's not like you're removing kidney stones. You're making them look better. They're walking out smiling. Yeah, they, most of them are very happy about how they feel and uh, very pleased. And so, uh, you know, it's moving forward in life.